HDMAX and Golang is a beautiful and elegant solution when it comes to full stack development. That's why we are going to explore throughout this video why HDMAX and Golang is such a beautiful combination and with these two technologies we are going to build a smaller project from scratch. And obviously the answer might shock you a little bit. Oh and by the way, if you're new here, my name is Flo, I'm a professional software engineer and on this channel we do everything related to the world of software engineering. So first, let's just clarify why the combination HTMX and Go is such a powerful and simplistic solution and combination. HTMX is relatively small and focused like Golang itself. Just for the fact that Golang really introduced generics after a couple of years after their initial release and even after a lot of discussions with the community. Furthermore, both are dependency free and do not require a necessary build step. And specifically for Go, you can just build a simple web server with a few lines of code. And this code includes a really clean paradigm and includes templating out of the box. So to conclude here, they both complement each other by being lean and efficient. Enough talk, let's get into building an example web server. So to start the project, we simply have a really simple and plain Golang project with a simple main function. And to make it really clear, we do not have any dependencies installed into this project. Furthermore, we've also created an index.html file just to demonstrate how efficient HTMX is with the combination of Golang. And you can actually see here in this line that we obviously use HTMX as a script. So we embed HTMX into our HTML website. So just for demonstration purposes, we are going to keep this example really clean and simple. Now, obviously you can build more complex solutions and projects, but this, as I said before, is just for demonstration purposes. So the use case is here that we basically want to display the time whenever we press on a button. Now this time does not come from JavaScript itself or from the client, it directly comes from our Go backend. And for that, obviously we need some sort of web server or HTTP server. So let's just start with serving the index.html file through our Go web server. So for that, we are going to make use of the HTTP package in Golang. And obviously we need to import it here from net slash HTTP. Then we are going to call handle func. And in here we are going to define the pattern with just a plain slash. So whenever the user calls our web server with a slash, we want to serve the index.html file. Then we obviously do have our handle func function here. Now this function is pretty much just a handler that gets called whenever we call this slash endpoint. Now in the body of this function, we are just going to say HTTP.surf file. And then we are going to use the HTTP response writer here and the request. Now obviously we also need to name these two function parameters. And the name of the file is just index.html. So I think this is pretty straightforward. We just export or serve the user with the index.html file whenever the client calls just a simple slash to our web server. So after that, let's quickly make a print statement that just says that we started our HTTP server on port 8080. And then we can make use of the listen and serve function. And here we are going to define the port in the address itself. And then as the handler, for now, we are just going to define nil here. Now we are not going to define a different mux because like I said before, this is just for demonstration purposes and we want to keep this example as clean as possible. That's why we are going to directly declare our routes with the HTTP package instead of declaring a new mux, for instance. And that's, by the way, also the reason why we define nil here as the second parameter on our listen and serve function. So let's quickly go to our index.html file. Now what we see here, like I said before, we embed HTMX directly and just display a simple h1 tag. Now if we start the server with go run main.go, and then go to our localhost with the port 8080, we see that it actually renders successfully our index.html file. And this is a pretty neat and simple web server. Now let's quickly make this example a bit more complicated. So for instance, we want to serve to the client some dynamic content or data for instance. 
So like I said before, Golang has templating out of the box and we can make use of that. For that, we are going to actually make use of the template package. And here we are just going to import HTML and then template. So let's get rid of this uh, file function here. And then we are going to call the pass files function of the template standard package. Now in here, we actually see that it expects an array of file names. And in here, we're just going to define index.html. So now the template package actually passes this index.html file, and then it can return the template or an error. Now, if there is a specific error, obviously we want to return something to the client. And we can do this by making use of the HTTP error function here. Then we are writing this error to our response writer of this endpoint. We define the error, and in here, we just make use of error.error .error basically, which just returns a string of the error. So what the error is basically. And as the HTTP code, we are going to make use of the status internal server error. And after that, we are obviously going to return. Now for the dynamic data, we are going to make use of an anonymous struct. Now this anonymous struct basically allows us to simply define a struct, but we do not use this anywhere else. So we can just say data here and then we define struct directly. Now this might seem weird, but it's really powerful. Now in this struct definition, we define the data we want to have in the struct. So in here I want, for instance, a simple message. And then we are going to initialize directly after defining the struct. And in here we say message and then we say hello world. And then after that, we can make use of this dynamic data. Now this can be pretty much everything you want. So the real purpose here of our dynamic data is to serve the client with some sort of interactivity, personalization or customization. And this data can come, for example, from a database, some sort of cache or anything you want. So let's just write this data back to the client by just making use of the execute function. Now in here again, we define our response writer. So where this data is actually get written to and then we define the data. Now this is pretty simple, right? But obviously we now want to make use of this data in our index.html file. So let's quickly switch back here and then we can make use, for instance, in an h2 tag of this dynamic data through the templating language of the golang.net HTTP server. Now this templating really includes everything you want from a templating language like loops or if conditions. However, we are just going to render this dynamic data, the message here to this h2 tag by just defining the two curly braces and then we are going to say dot and then message and this is how we can access the dynamic data that was actually served to the index.html file now if we refresh our localhost page we actually see that we get the hello world h2 tag here which is really powerful right because we now rendered successfully some dynamic data to our index.html file now let's get back to our main.go file and quickly create the time endpoint and in this time endpoint we are actually going to serve the user or the client with the real time of our backend now for that again we make use of the handle func function here in the net http package and in here we are going to define the pattern or the route slash time then again we are going to define this callback function here and in here we are now going to simply write something directly to the client then we are going to create a byte array now this byte array basically now transforms the given string we actually pass into here which will be the time to a byte array which then can be consumed by the client so now we say current time and then we say plus time dot now dot format and in here we're going to specify the layout now I'm not going to really explain the formats here. Obviously these are specifications and you can actually see the example in the documentation, but this is a pretty typical one. And now we've created our slash time endpoint. So let's add some interactivity through HTMX in our HTML file. Now for that, we are going to need a button and let's just name this button get current time. And then we're going to define hx dash get which basically says that hmx should call this get endpoint whenever 
this button gets pressed. In here we call the slash time endpoint and then we define wherever the value gets rendered through the target attribute here. And here we are just going to define a simple ID with the name time. And obviously this ID has to exist, so let's quickly create an element with this ID. Let's just make use of an h2 tag here again. Not common practice and I don't really recommend using h2 and h1 over and over again, but this is just for testing purposes. And in here we are going to define the ID, which is obviously the same as our target. And let's just say that the default value here is shows current time. So if you now go back to our localhost 8080, we see the h1 tag, we see the h2 tag with the dynamic data, and we see another h2 tag which basically displays shows current time, and our button. Now if we press this button, we actually get this current time here, and this time is not served through JavaScript, however it is served through our Golang backend. And with that, I hope you can actually see the real power behind HTMX adding interactivity with the combination of using Golang. Now it is pretty clear that you can use any backend you want. So you could just create a Rust Actix web backend using a simple Python Flask backend or just stick to Node.js. However, this powerful combination is really awesome and I highly recommend using it. And that was basically it. I hope that you now kind of understand what the real reason is behind using HTMX in Golang. And the reason is pretty simple, there is no real reason, the only reason is that it's really simplistic and really dependency free. But speaking of Rust and Actix Web, I highly recommend watching this video if you want to quickly know how to develop a really speedy and fast Rust backend with Actix Web. So feel free to check out this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day and bye bye.